right now on 18 Eyewitness News. There's going to be a women's expo this weekend. A local museum is honoring moms this weekend as well. And a nine-year-old that went missing has been found. All of these stories and Dustin's latest Storm Tracker Weather Center forecast. 18 Eyewitness News starts now. Hello everybody, I'm Fred Dawkins. Thanks for joining us and here are the stories we're working on for you on 18 Eyewitness News. Ladies of all ages are invited to a women's expo this weekend at the Van Buren Youth and Community Center. Center Director Kathy Alford tells 18 Eyewitness News it's a girly girl day. It's just a big girly day. We have flowers, hair and makeup and candles and women's health. Kathy says there will be something for any woman, including a fun-filled fashion show. The event is free and will be this Saturday from 9 a.m. until 3 p.m. For more information, you can call Kathy at 323-8958. We want to know from our women viewers, do you enjoy going on events like this one? Vote at our online poll at kdkz18.com. Since the first recorded police death in 1792, more than 19,000 law enforcement officers have been killed in the line of duty. In recognition of National Police Officers Memorial Week, the Mineral Area College Law Enforcement Academy is inviting area law enforcement and emergency personnel, as well as the public, to attend the Police Officers Memorial Ceremony at 10 a.m. on Thursday at the Fine Arts Theater on the Park Hills campus. Academy Director Rich Frotron tells 18 Eyewitness News this is a way to pay tribute to local fallen officers. This is something that we, we do every year during Police Officer Memorial Week. We try to do our own little localized ceremony here honoring the police officers in our region who have made the ultimate sacrifice. The ceremony will include a keynote address by Crystal City Police Officer Eric Ziegler, son of the late St. Francis County Deputy Stephen Ziegler, and a multimedia presentation honoring the fallen officers of our region. For more information, call the Academy at 518-2148. Nursing and paramedic students from Three Rivers College held a mass casualty training drill Tuesday morning in Poplar Bluff. The drill was designed to stimulate and simulate what it would be to respond to a disaster where there are multiple injuries and deaths. Students set up emergency triage tents and treated multiple patients during a fake arson fire. Even though it was just a drill, the college tried to simulate a potentially chaotic situation. More than 60 students took part in the drill, along with the Poplar Bluff Police and Fire Departments. Missouri public schools and universities will be getting a funding increase under an agreement by legislative budget negotiators. A group of House and Senate members decided on Tuesday to provide a $25 million funding increase to public colleges and universities based on whether they have met performance criteria, such as student graduation rates. That's less than the $34 million increase sought by Governor Jay Nixon, but more than the House had earlier approved this year. The budget also includes $10 million for the University of Missouri Medical School to expand a residency program at the Cox Health System in Springfield. Public school districts would get $66 million increase to their $3 billion of core funding, which is the same amount that Nixon recommended. Well, now Dustin Kopp is here with a look at our southeast Missouri forecast. Dustin, what's on tap? Throughout southeast Missouri at this hour, we're seeing temperatures in the 70s, 75 in St. Genevieve, 75 in Fredertown, as well as in Cape Girardeau and uh, Piedmont, as well as in Ironton, Ellington at 74. Throughout the evening hours, we're going to continue to see a cloudy sky increasing throughout the evening hours. 76 degrees at 7 p.m., 9 p.m. temperature 71. By midnight, we're down to 66. More details on your forecast include some showers and thunderstorms for your Thursday. That's coming up in just a little bit. And when we come back on 18 Eyewitness News, a local museum is honoring moms this weekend. That story coming up only on 18 Eyewitness News. 
For 15 years, Heartland Furniture and Appliance has been the leader in price for restonic bedding. Whirlpool built Crossley appliances, Frigidaire appliances, sofa sets, recliners, accent furniture, and White's metal detectors. Same day delivery with no waiting. We are fast becoming this area's leader in the home furnishing and appliance business. Need a little cash? Payday loans are available in each store. We'd love to have you come see us at one of our three locations on both sides of Main Street in Piedmont, Business 60 in Dexter, and next to Current River Ford in Donovan. Heartland Furniture and Appliance, 223-3200. How can heat also be cool? When it comes from targeted induction technology, which uses electromagnetic waves to quick heat your pan, boiling up to 40% faster, while the surface around it stays perfectly cool to the touch. It's faster, hotter, and, well, cooler. Hi, Bob Seaball at Seaball Furniture and Appliance. Come and see this and other great features and benefits that will amaze you. Now on sale at Seaball Furniture and Appliance in downtown Fredericktown. You're watching 18 Eyewitness News with Fred Dawkins and Dustin Kopp. 18 Eyewitness News continues. The Bollinger County Museum will be celebrating Mother's Day. Kids, bring your mom to the museum on Saturday for a fun family outing. Museum Director Patricia Welker tells 18 Eyewitness News how they are celebrating all moms. We're giving mothers free admission to the museum so you can bring your families and enjoy all of our fine exhibits and gift shop and activities that we have inside. Regular admission will apply for all other visitors besides mothers. For more information, call 238-1174. Missouri budget negotiators have decided to press ahead with cuts for agencies caught up in a controversy involving a driver's license applicant and concealed gun permit holders. A panel of House and Senate members agreed Tuesday to cut funding by one-third next year for the Motor Vehicle Division in the Department of Revenue. The intent is to provide the rest of the money if the agency makes changes to its licensing procedures by next January. Republican lawmakers are upset about new procedures in which licensed clerks are making electronic copies of applicants' personal documents, such as birth certificates. They also are upset that a list of concealed gun permit holders was shared by the Highway Patrol with a federal fraud investigator. A nine-year-old boy went missing Tuesday afternoon near Bloomfield. Late in the day, after a long search, crews found the boy. He was unharmed. Colton Cornell was found safe about a mile from his home near a creek behind Sonic in Bloomfield. Police say that the boy had been missing since he got off the school bus on Tuesday. The boy went into his home, then went outside to play south of the Stars and Stripes Museum, just south of Bloomfield. Authorities estimate that he traveled about two and a half miles following a creek that led up to a friend's house. They say Cornell joined some friends from school and rode a three-wheeler. He then left to go back home a short time later. A neighbor who had heard about a missing boy saw him walking away down a street and told her mother. The woman then called authorities, and then they found Cornell. Poplar Bluff Junior and Senior High Cheerleaders has held their first of a series of fundraisers to help finance a trip to Gator Bowl in Jacksonville, Florida, which is estimated to cost around $35,000. Now, this is the first time the cheerleaders were selected based on their community service to uh, the college football bowl game, which is on January 1st. In November, the squads will be in choreography for the competition, which includes performances during the halftime show of the nationally televised event. And when we come back on 18 Eyewitness News, we'll have a look at the latest Missouri State headlines. When someone comes in a mental area's emergency department, 
Our focus is giving them the best treatment in the quickest manner possible. We track every single patient, sending the doctors information before they even walk in the room. We have dedicated x-ray and CT equipment in our emergency department. We don't have to waste any time running all over the hospital. We know that minutes count in an emergency, and you can count on ER Plus at Mineral Area Regional Medical Center. With extended hours, let the UPS store pack and ship your gifts. Hi, I'm Steve from the UPS store in Farmington, Missouri. Me and my staff would like to wish you and yours a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. A Missouri Court of Appeals has restored $28 million in punitive damages to the families of five people who died in the crash of a skydiving plane shortly after takeoff from a rural Missouri airport. Six people died when the plane crashed in July of 2006 at Sullivan Regional Airport. In 2011, a Franklin County jury ordered Doncasters Incorporated to pay $28 million in punitive damages and $20 million in compensated damages to the five of the families. The sixth family did not join in the lawsuit. The trial judge stripped the punitive damages from the award and the families appealed. The appeals court restored the $28 million on Tuesday and denied Doncaster's request for a new trial. Kansas City police say Mayor Sly James didn't get special treatment when retrieving his son's car from the city tow lot without paying a $200 fee. Because the car had expired tags and damage, an officer thought it was abandoned. It was towed April 25th from in front of the mayor's house and impounded without an outstanding warrant and expired tags. But after James relayed that Kyle's warrants had recently been taken care of, a supervisor ordered the car to be released without no fee. But it turns out the car did have one remaining warrant for parking at an expired meter, which had apparently been overlooked. The father and son together have spent more than $700 resolving violations with that car. Well, police in southeast Missouri are investigating a road rage incident on Interstate 55 that included several shots fired into a car. A silver sport utility vehicle passed a car Monday afternoon and suddenly slammed on its brakes, causing the car to strike the rear of the SUV. Someone got out of the SUV with a handgun and fired seven to eight shots into the car. Four people in the car were not struck by any bullets but were injured by broken glass. Authorities continue to search for the SUV. It isn't clear what prompted the attack. Those caught in St. Louis with small amounts of marijuana will get a break starting on this month. Mayor Francis Slay has signed a measure that gives police the option to re-strike some marijuana cases to municipal court. Starting June the 1st, violators will typically, typically be given a summons to appear in municipal court rather than handcuffed and taken to the police station. Under the existing law, those caught with 1 to 35 grams face misdemeanor charges punishable by up to a year in jail and a $1,000 fine. The penalty for violation of the new city ordinance is a fine of $100 to $500. Thunderstorms are on the way for southeast Missouri. All the latest weather information coming up next. We'll be right back. Your health is brought to you by... Parkland Health Mart Pharmacy. If you or a loved one has been implanted with a pelvic mesh, commonly called a bladder sling, you may be entitled to a significant cash award. Many women implanted with this device have suffered discomfort, excruciating pain, and even incontinence. The FDA has even warned that pelvic meshes may cause serious injuries, including pain, scarring, infection, incontinence, and discomfort. If you or a loved one has been implanted with a pelvic mesh, call the Relyon Group at 800-796-6986.
Here is your Storm Tracker forecast. And welcome back. Temperatures right now in the upper 70s. It's warm out there and cloudy skies. Feels like 78, and that's our current temperature with 57 uh, dew point and 49% humidity. A south southwest wind at 3 miles per hour. Throughout the area, we're seeing temperatures in the 70s, 75 in Cape Girardeau, Fredericktown, 75. Ellington right now at 74 degrees. Throughout the state of Missouri, Kansas City at 74, 72 in Columbia, 75 in Springfield, St. Louis right now at 76 degrees. Here's what we're watching for. We're watching for uh, Thursday storms. Looks like some of those could be on the uh, severe side or strong side. One more day of warm air. It looks like temperatures are cooling off, especially next week. So here's your setup for southeast Missouri. We're going to see this front drape over portions of Missouri. It's going to scoot us some showers and thunderstorms. We'll see those showers and thunderstorms tomorrow on your Thursday. However, some of those could be on the strong to severe side. 56 to 60 for your overnight low tonight. Isolated thunderstorms possible, especially after midnight. Light to variable winds for tomorrow. Those showers and thunderstorms continue again, possibly on the strong and severe side. 76 to 79 does it for our daytime high. South wind 10 to 15. The next several days look like this here in southeast Missouri. We will be seeing those showers and thunderstorms continuing on Friday. Isolated in nature, 70 degrees as of our daytime high. Saturday and Sunday, plenty of sunshine. Saturday, 70 degrees. Cooler on Sunday at 61. Mostly sunny on Monday, 68, 75, and mostly sunny on Tuesday. And then we're back in the 80s on Wednesday with mostly sunny skies. Don't forget, you can check out our website, kdkz18.com, for the latest weather information. Coming up on today's Your Life segment on 18 Eyewitness News, connecting with your teen may seem impossible some days, but on today's Focus on the Family with Dr. Bill Meyer, meet one mother with a special date on her calendar. I'm Stacy Johnson. Ever get a traffic ticket and wonder what it's going to do to your insurance rates? Well, you tell me the infraction, I'll tell you exactly what's going to happen. Just down the road on Money Talks News. Tips to make you money delivered daily. The totally free Money Talks newsletter. Sign up now and get my money makeover video, a $50 value, as my gift. MoneyTalksNews.com Attention, Accutane warning. If you have Crohn's disease, ulcerative colitis, or inflammatory bowel disease, it may have been caused by the acne drug Accutane. Accutane victims have recently been awarded millions of dollars. Do not delay. There are time deadlines to file a claim. Call the Rely On Group now to be connected with an experienced attorney. There is absolutely no risk on your part. You don't owe us a penny unless we are successful. Call the Rely On Group at 800-698-3105. If you have diabetes and you're on Medicare, call now to get the new talking meter. These new meters are more accurate, they're easier to use, and the best news is you don't have to prick your fingers anymore. Areva makes it simple. They bill Medicare directly. There are no upfront costs, and they deliver your supplies right to your door for free. For more information, call one. You may have heard of daddy dates where dad takes his little girl out for a special one-on-one -on -one time. Well, today, Dr. Bill Meyer introduces us to a family who's got a twist on that idea. 15-year-old Josh has a standing appointment at least once a month, a date with mom. Our date time is usually centered around breakfast because that's Josh's favorite meal of the day and he loves pancakes, waffles hash browns, all those things. Along with a hearty breakfast, Lisa and Josh enjoy a healthy serving of one-on-one -on -one time. That's an increasingly rare commodity as Josh gets further into high school. It's just like busy schedule, nice to talk about things you normally know don't talk about, you know, because like when you're like rushing through the day, you don't have time to say, you know, How's your day going? A stronger relationship is just one benefit of these monthly breakfasts. Another is the opportunity to offer Josh some training for when he actually starts dating. That one-on-one -on -one time with a woman and, and eating in a social setting. There's so much in our environment, our society that just is against proper treatment of women. I think it's important that respect is taught. If each parent can carve out a regular time for each child in the family, especially if it's doing something the child loves, then you're well on your way to helping head off the worst of the teenage disconnect. Now, even if you don't think the conversations are that important, a foundation is being laid. 
I don't know that he'll remember any particular breakfast or any particular time, but just that we had consistent time and that we, that we had a good relationship through his teenage years. We're focused on the family. I'm Dr. Bill Meyer. For more valuable information on life's issues, relationships, and family, visit our website, kdkz18.com, and click on the Focus on the Family link. If you've ever been pulled over, you know the dreaded feeling of worrying about getting a ticket and how much it will affect your finances. Well, many expert Stacy Johnson shows us some of the types of tickets that can raise your car's insurance rates. No matter how you get a traffic ticket, the consequences can be super expensive. Now, you know when you get a ticket, you're going to have to pay a fine, maybe some court costs, maybe for school. But what is it going to do to those car insurance rates? Insurance.com did a study on auto insurance rate increases and traffic tickets. The most expensive ticket? Reckless driving. It can cause your insurance to go up an average of 22%. Next costly infraction? DUI. With the first offense, jacking rates 19% on average. Another potentially expensive ticket, driving without a license. That could result in an 18% rate increase. Now it's going to come as no surprise that speeding tickets are going to raise your car insurance rates. The average is 11 to 15%, but the faster you are going, the greater the effect is going to be. Failing to yield may result in a 9% rate increase, while a seatbelt infraction could cost you 3%. So what do you do? Well, you can hire an attorney or go to court yourself and try to avoid points, and thus the record on your license. Bottom line, obviously you want to follow the rules of the road, try to keep your tickets to a minimum. But whether you get a ticket or not, we can show you how to deal with high insurance costs. Just go to moneytalksnews.com and do a search for car insurance. For Money Talks News, I'm Stacy Johnson. And as Stacy said, he's got lots of information and links at his website to help you out. To get there, just go to our website, kdkz18.com, click on the Money Talks link under the Lifestyles menu. And coming up here in sports, the Cubs ended the winning streak for the Cardinals. A former Ram has been placed in the College Football Hall of Fame, and decisions on the Final Four's broadcast for next year. Sports Zone is next. Coming up tonight on KDKZ Channel 18. This is Sports Zone. A Cardinals club that bashed its way to a 29 run over a four day span in Milwaukee couldn't sustain the offensive output on Tuesday night. Nate Shearholt's two run blast off of Lance Lynn in the fourth trumped an earlier homer from Alan Craig and lifted the Cubs to a 2 1 win in front of more than 30,000 fans at Wrigley Field. Former St. Louis Rams first round draft pick and all pro left tackle Orlando Pace was voted into the College Football Hall of Fame. Pace was one of the most decorative offensive linemen in college football history, where he played for Ohio State from 94 to 96. Pace was a first team All American in 95 and 96 and won the Outland Trophy back in 96. He was the first player to repeat as a Lombardi Trophy winner and was named the 1996 Big Ten Offensive Player of the Year. And the Final Four's national semifinal games will only be on cable TV the next two years. The Saturday of Doubleheader will be on TBS in 2014 and 2015, with the title game remaining on CBS. Under the 14-year deal that CBS and Turner Sports had signed with the NCAA back in 2010, CBS and TBS were scheduled to start alternating broadcasts of the entire Final Four starting in 2016, but Turner had the option to move that up to 2014. CBS will also begin airing two of the final regional finals starting next season. They had all been on CBS in the past. And that's today in sports. Fred and Dustin, guys, it's back to you. I'm Aaron Cox. Thanks a lot, Aaron. Taking a quick check of your forecast for the rest of this evening. We're going to be seeing some changes on the way, but before we get to those changes, we're going to see some warmer temperatures. 76 degrees at 7 p.m. Cloudy skies. Cloudy skies remain overnight. 71 at 9 p.m. and by midnight, we're down to 66. Like I was saying, those changes are on the way for your Thursday. We'll have all the latest weather information coming up tonight at 10 o'clock. News Watch is next. We'll see you tonight at 10. When you see news happening in your area, let us know about it. You can call our news department at 573-701-9590 or email us at news at dawkinsbroadcastgroup.com.